good to see those in the sanctuary. And we thank you for those who are joining us by Facebook. If you will, just hit that little share button. That way the gospel goes out even further. You can share it with your friends and your family as well. All right, well, let's go ahead and welcome in uh, the Holy Spirit. Father God, we just thank you that we do have a midweek service. We thank you, Father God, that we have a place that we can come into on a Wednesday night, Father God, and just lay our, lay our concerns and the things of the week at the altar and just pick up a new refreshing with our brothers and sisters of Christ. Thank you, Father God, that you love us so much, that your presence is strong with each and every one of us, that you never leave us, you never forget us, you never forsake us. Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for the power of the Holy Spirit that came through his, his death and resurrection. We thank you, Father God, that we can pray to you and know that you hear us. We know that you hear our tears, our fears, and you also see our hopes and our dreams. And Father God, you have planned a good plan for our life. We thank you, Father God, for your word that says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and give you good hope. So, Father God, we thank you. We thank you for scriptures. We thank you for the word that's coming tonight that gives us hope, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for those that are healing, those that are in hospital beds or are at home that are, are just um, walking through the manifestation of your full healing. We give you glory, Father God, for what you're doing in their lives. We thank you for those that are are coming up financially, Father God, that you are, are bringing the needs that they have, Father God, to, to fruition into the things that prosper them, Father God. We thank you for those that are seeking jobs, Father God, that you have the place where they're to be, Father God, and that it meets them where their need is. And Father God, we thank you for strength. We thank you that we have joy in your presence, Father God, despite what the circumstances are. We thank you that we can have peace that passes all understanding even when the storms are raging. Father God, we thank you that your promise to us is that we will go to the other side, that you have victory for us, you have hope for us, Father God, and that you love us with an everlasting love. And we thank you for that, Father. Tonight, Father God, we ask the angels to guard over this service, to guard over everything of this service, Father God, from the audio to any kind of disturbances, Father God, and even within our own mind, maybe thinking of things that happened today or this week, and and just getting off focus. Father God, we are going to focus on you. And Holy Spirit, we know that you can calm our spirits and you can calm our ears and our eyes and so that we will be alert to what you have to say, that we will hear what you have to say and it will change us and transform us into your image. We give you all the glory and the praise, Father God, for what you're doing this night in Jesus' name. All right, well, pastors have... Uh, each week they've um, handed us out some scriptures and they've, they've uh, been teaching, you know, we've had teachings on forgiveness, we've had teachings on the love walk, you know, and um, last Sunday, this very past Sunday, so you can just rewind, it should be come up on YouTube as the last video from Oasis, but anyway, it was on that, won't he do it again? And it was on testimonies and how that what God does for one person, he'll do for another. So if you see, you know, someone that you're hanging out with and they seem to be getting all this favor, listen to their testimonies. Listen to what God did and then take it to God and say, God, you know, you did it for them. Show me how to get there because God has those same blessings for you that he has for everyone else. He's not partial. So if there's something you need, find some scriptures and some testimonies, as, as Pastor said. Look up those testimonials. You know, look up people. If, if you need some healing um, for your back, you know, look up testimonials on people that, you know, got healed in their back and what they did. You know, if you need something, uh, if you need a car, look on testimonies. You know, that how, listen to testimonies on how God delivered a car, you know, miraculously. God can move people's hearts. He can move the wicked to give to the righteous. He has said that. So, you know, it may be a way that you don't even know about. That's why God doesn't want us just to depend on our friends and family. He wants us to depend on him because he might bring it from a total unseen place. But he will bring it to us. But what we have to do is we have to testify, testify about what God does for us. And then we also have to listen to testimonies because it strengthens our faith. And the scripture that pastors gave was from Acts 10 and 34. It is in the Amplified Classic. 
And Peter opened his mouth and said, that's important. That was a point that pastors made. We have to say, most certainly and thoroughly, I now perceive and understand that God shows no partiality and is no respecter of persons. And pastor told us that testimony in the root meaning means to do it again, to repeat. Also, that testimony elevates our faith. It enlightens us to wisdom and understanding. When someone says, hey, my feet were hurting and I did this, we listen. And then we can do the same thing and have the same result, the good result that we're looking for. And also those testimonies, they do multiply. That's why we are to testify of the goodness of the Lord because we don't know who needs that. And pastors also told us not to forget that God did it. To seek testimonies that declare deliverance and not destruction. The Spirit of God produces life. God multiplies the testimony. He will bring it up and out of your spirit. You have the same outcome. Praise be to God. And that was actually my interpretation, Pastor, of what you said. So anyway, that was my little synopsis for Deborah. But hopefully, maybe that helped you as well. So anyway, at this time, we're going to go ahead and turn it over to praise and worship. So if you would, join us in song. Glory to God. If you're able tonight, will you stand up with us? And let's go on and welcome the Lord in with a hand clap and a shout if you like. Glory. Glory. Because he is so great, and it's so wonderful that he loves us and loves to hear from us. Amen? Amen. Glory, glory. Hey, guys.
got the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. It's just something about the Lord even saying his name and hearing his voice and, and reading his word and, and being around the people of God. It makes you want to sing. It does me anyway, and I hope it does you. Glory, glory, glory. In every situation, he is always the way maker. Amen. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what you hear with your ears. If it's a negative report, he's still the way maker. Hallelujah. And that's why the people we've been praying for that are sick are being raised up regardless. Say this with me tonight. The body of Christ, the body of Christ here, here at, Oasis, at Oasis is being raised up. Being raised God up. is doing his work. God is doing his and they are being healed. And we thank him for it. Thank you, Lord. Give him a shout.
to always move when we do that song. Maybe not every song we do, but he sure moves on that song. I think he likes the words to that song. Hallelujah. We just lift our hands tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you in this place. We worship you. We thank you that you came in here to be with us because you love us with an everlasting love. And we're loving you back, Lord. That's why we're here. We want to show you that we can also be faithful. Thank you for helping us. Thank you, Lord. We just worship you. Hallelujah. You might be seated tonight. Okay, it's time for us to speak over our tithes and offering and uh, welcome and encourage Facebook to join in at this time and out there on YouTube. And Father God, and then I'm going to pray over the tithes and offering. Thank you. Father God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for the ones that can be here tonight, Father God. And those that can't be, Father God, we ask that you bless them. And you keep them safe as they're traveling wherever they may be going, Father God. Put your angels of protection around them. Yes. And we just encourage y'all out there on Facebook and YouTube to give your tithes and offerings because you can't outdo God. He is so wonderful. And I give him all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. Amen. 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 And my scripture is... Exodus 23:19 in the NIV. Bring the best of the first fruits of your soil to the house of the Lord your God. So if we always bring our tithes first to our God, he will see that we get back what we need. Yes. But if we don't give with a, a joyful heart and a, a grudgingly heart, he will not no. see what you no. need. No. You have to give joyfully yes. from your heart. Yes. And yes. at one time, I, I didn't pay tithes. And I didn't get nothing. I prayed for things, but nothing came. So I made up my mind that I, when I started paying tithes here, then many years ago, <laughs> I have nothing but to receive from God. Yes. I have received, oh. it ain't just money. I have received furniture that's free. Mm -hmm. I have been blessed with so many items in my home. Mm -hmm. And so if you'll just give your tithes and offering to the Lord, he'll do the same for you. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to speak over our tithes and offerings. As I tithe and give offerings, As I, tithe and give offerings I, believe and I, I believe and I receive jobs and better jobs, jobs and better jobs. raises and bonuses, raises and bonuses. Benefits, benefits, sales and commissions, sales and commissions. Favorable, settlements, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, estates and inheritances. interest and income, interest interest income. rebates and returns, rebates and returns. Discounts and, dividends, discounts and dividends, checks in the mail, checks checks in the mail. Gifts, and surprises, gifts and surprises, finding money, finding money. Bills, decrease, bills, bills decrease, bills paid off, bills paid off. Blessings, and increase. blessings and increase. Thank you, Lord, Thank you, Lord for, for meeting all my financial needs. That I may now have, I may now have more, than enough more than enough to give into the kingdom of God, to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is the ways that you can give, ways to give. OSVHHub.com slash Oasis Family Church slash giving slash funds. Or you can go to www. 
paypal.me slash Oasis Family Church. You can also text to give 334-274-7885. You can use the donate button at www.oasisfamilychurch.net or you can use the cash app, Oasis, dollar sign Oasis Family Church. And you can also mail your donations to P.O. Box 246, Smith Station, Alabama, 36877. And now we're going to turn it over to Miss Patty for the word tonight. If you see the board up here, this is a trial run. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking about drawing some things, and, and my lesson kind of got turned around a little bit. You know, <laughs> you think you got it, and then you. <laughs> That's <laughs> made 4,000 changes. And I also thought about it. I said, if I try to draw, somebody's going to have tomatoes and they're going to throw them at me because I don't draw that good. So, so anyway, we changed it. And I know everybody probably can't see the board, but I'm going to call these scriptures out anyway. So tonight, we're uh, speaking on soaring like an eagle. And you know, in the last lesson, I talked to you some about the eagle and the sheep. If you'll remember... Uh, I talked to you about the sheep, how uh, when the shepherd, I mean, and this is his real life, and I actually have pictures on my phone if anybody wants to see them, that my brother's ex-wife, who they still get along, uh, she was over, uh, I forget the place, but way overseas and in the area where there were shepherds with the sheep. And so I got a couple of pictures if anybody wants to see them. But uh, I talked about when you have the shepherd, and it's a good shepherd, the sheep recognize his voice, and that's how we're supposed to be. We're supposed to recognize our father's voice because he's the shepherd and we're the sheep, or the Lord Jesus, or the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so, three in one. So, uh, when the older sheep are out there with the shepherd, they are just so happy because they're confident and feel safe. And so when he starts to take them into the sheepfold, it's a, a, a place where they're all kept trying to keep them safe from wolves and stuff, all kinds of predators. Well, these older sheep that have been around this shepherd a long time, they'll just go bouncing in there. They don't have the least bit of hesitation. Then you've got the other sheep that are not quite as mature and they haven't been around the shepherd quite as much. And they'll come on in, but they're kind of hesitant. And so every once in a while, they need a little help getting in. Then you got the young sheep that don't have a clue, <laughs> like I've been plenty of times. And they don't have a clue, and they have to use those sheep herding dogs to gather them in because they, they're just running everywhere. They don't want to go in, and they don't know that they're going to be protected. So the moral of that story is, is get in the sheepfold. <laughs> if you're not born again, get born again because end times are here, and we don't need to be playing. Amen? Amen. Okay, and uh, so I'll, I think I'm leaving the rest of the sheep thing alone for right now, but you, you got the picture. So in Lamentations, oh, and I got quite a few scriptures, but how do we feel about scriptures? We love scriptures. Love scriptures. All, right, all right, that stuck, Pastor Sharon. <laughs> Lamentations 3.22 in the Amplified, it says, It is because of the Lord's mercy and loving kindness that we are not consumed because his tender compassions fail not. And in the New International Version, it says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassions never fail. And in 3 and 23, Lamentations, in the voice, it says, here they are every morning new. Your faithfulness, God, is as broad as the day. And you know something else? I'm going to give y'all permission to do something. If I move too fast and you want to hear the scripture and you can't see it up there, just say, can you repeat that? I don't have a problem with that. In the New Life Version, Lamentations 3.23, it is new every morning. He is so very faithful. Jeremiah 31 and 3 in the New Life Version. Now, I love this, and I never noticed it before. The Lord came to us from far away saying, 
I have loved you with a love that lasts forever. So I have helped you come to me with loving kindness. In the New International Version, it says the Lord appeared to us in the past and he was saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. Like I said, a lot of scriptures. Okay. In Psalms 139, 3 through 7, and I like this too, you keep track of when I travel and when I stay. And you're familiar with all my ways. Now, Jeff and some of the rest recognize those scriptures from a song the choir used to do. You're familiar with all my ways. Before there is a word on my tongue, you, Lord, already know it completely. You put a fence behind me and in front of me, and you have placed your hand on me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high. I cannot grasp it. Same scriptures. In the Amplified, and I don't know about anybody else, but the Amplified is one of my favorite. You sift and search out my path and my lying down. You are always acquainted with my all my ways. For there's not a word in my tongue, still unuttered, but behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You have beset me and shut me in, behind and before. That's the hedge. You have laid your hand upon me. Your infinite knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's too high for me. It's high above me. I cannot reach it. Where could I go from your spirit? Or where could I flee from your presence? How many of you know that no matter where you go, high or low, out, near, far, west, east, that he's always aware of where you are and near you? In Isaiah 52 and 12, it says... For you will not go out with haste, and you'll not go out in flight, as was necessary when Israel left Egypt. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. So he's in front of us, he's on every side of us, and he's behind us. The New Life Version says, but you'll not go out in a hurry. You'll not leave as if you were running for your lives. For the Lord will go before you. The God of Israel will keep watch behind you. Okay, and you're probably thinking, well, she said the name of this lesson was Soar Like an Eagle. We're going there. Okay? How many of you did this when your children were growing up? I did. It's kind of like the Lord has surrounded us or hemmed us in. Well, when my kids were little and they started walking, I start placing things around them, a barrier to keep them from falling on something, like a coffee table or something. And uh, that way they couldn't get too far or they couldn't get hurt. The best I could take care of them. And now the enemy wants to hem us in so that we cannot escape his assault. But God hems us in with his love and a shield. So the enemy has no way in. It's like the sheepfold. When we're in the sheepfold, the enemy can't get in the sheepfold, okay? And we're in the sheepfold if we're born again and we're trying to stay close. So this is my thing to you. Stay inside God's fence or his perimeter. Amen? Y'all agree with that? Amen. Say, I agree. I agree. <laughs> Okay, good job. <laughs> it's fun sometimes to tell y'all what to do. <laughs> I'm just playing with you, though. In John 10.10, 10, you know the scripture. The thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. But God said, my purpose is to give life in all of its fullness. So when, if God has his way with us and we're yielding to him, he doesn't just save us. He doesn't just heal us one time and forget us. He doesn't just uh, supply one meal. He makes sure that everything that we require is supplied. Amen. Because he's a good God. Resting inside the gate in the sheepfold, would the wolf come in at night to the sheep if they were standing right beside the shepherd? Would Satan walk up and try to harm one of his children? Uh, 
if Jesus is standing right beside us. No, he, he, he don't want to go there. He's done been whipped before. Amen. And so he's looking for that one that strayed away and got isolated. So our job, our plan, our need is to stay close to God. I get my pages right. I gotta do a Bonnie. Let me let me do a Bonnie. Okay. And uh, Debbie will uh, fill in the sounds. Okay. We love Bonnie. We just like to throw something out there once in a while because Bonnie is an excellent teacher. Okay. And uh, I got my pages mixed up. Okay. Here we go. All right. This is talking about Jacob in Deuteronomy 32 and 10 and 11. I probably, no, I still got there. I don't know if you can see it, but like I said, this is a a learning curve for me. The Lord found him in a desolate land and an empty wasteland where animals howl, howl. He continually guarded him and taught him. He continually protected him like the pupil of his eye. I didn't get that, but... (laughs) Like an eagle that stirs up its nest, that hovers over its young. So the Lord spread out his wings and took him and lifted him up on his pinions. Uh, The last time I spoke, we said that a pinion was like a little bone in the wing that gives it the ability to, he can spread his wings out. And it helps, I guess, helps hold them strong. But now I was looking at this page and if you, anybody can see it, it's got a lot of footnotes in it. And I'm not trying to get you to read the footnotes. I'm just showing you how many they are. So I just kind of glance down at them. I, I do that. And uh, this is what I found. And it's referring to Deuteronomy 10 again, 32 and 10. He said, uh, the term Ishan, which I don't know how to pronounce it right, means literally little man. Oh, I read the wrong one. I'm so sorry. The prefix verbal form is an imperfect indicating habitual or typical behavior. So what I'm saying and what this word is saying, that it is typical for the Lord to shelter us, to cover us with his wings. It's just a natural behavior that God does. He, he does, and you remember what it says, he never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So it's normal that God looks out for us. It's not something that he has to do because uh, some force is forcing him to. No, it's, the who he, it's who he is and his desire to keep us and take care of us. Amen. Now, I think I got all that. Now, we're going to talk about the eagle a little more and okay I got these notes from a pastor called Darren Brown and he calls this lessons from the eagle and he says he loves watching the eagles and he was watching one soar recently above the property and he talked about they were powerful birds mighty have courage, and they're victorious. Now that's that's who we're supposed to be, okay? And you know Psalms, I mean not Psalms, Isaiah 40, 31, I didn't write it down, but you know what it says. It says, wait upon the Lord and he shall renew your strength. You shall mount up with wings as an eagle. You shall run and not be weary. You shall walk and not faint. So if we're doing what God says, he's going to continuously strengthen us. Now, I know me and Chrissy said we were wore out tonight, so we need need to do a little soaring, but soaring on some eagle's wings. But God does refresh us, amen? Amen. In Proverbs 30, 18 through 19, he says, There are three things too wonderful for me. For I do not understand the way of an eagle in the sky, the way of a serpent on the rock, the way of a ship on the high seas, and the way of a man with a virgin. But we're just talking about the eagle. So a mature eagle can have a wingspan of over two meters and can weigh around seven kilos. It has eyesight that can spot a rabbit at over three kilometers. Now, 
I'm going to skip down here because of, it says they are renowned for having superior eyesight and concentration. We should have a good vision and concentration. Psalms 39, 27, and 29. In other words, right now, whether I'm up here or whether pastors are up here or, or Bonnie or anybody, we should be concentrating on what's being said. Because even if I don't do the word justice, I'm speaking the word and the word is good. Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. Is it at your command that the eagle mounts up and makes his nest on high? On the rock he dwells and makes his home, on the rocky crag and stronghold. From there he spies out the prey, and his eyes behold it from far away. Now, who can tell me, and just speak out, it's, it's okay. Who can tell me why he builds his nest way up high? What do you think? Does anybody have an idea? Nobody can get to it. There's no predators. I heard, I heard. Yes, yes. Same thing she was saying. Okay. Uh, so the Lord prompts the animals to do things, and they just do what they do. But God gives us these examples and illustrations so we can follow and learn. So we need to be thinking high thoughts. Amen? We need to think on the Lord, and we need to keep our minds straight. And that can be a job with uh, me. <laughs> so uh, to catch their prey, the eagle can see it from three kilometers away. And they focus on it with laser-like intensity and set out to get it. The lesson for us is that we too should focus on the goals God gives for us, concentration, effort, and energy to achieve them. And you know, what's that scripture? I don't know where it is, but I know where it says, Don't be weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. And we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Ephesians 2 and 10. And I had to throw this in there. And it's out there in the hall. There is a framed picture of the vision of the church. The Bible says that we perish for a lack of vision. But we have a vision right out there. Amen? Amen. If you had never looked at it, go look at it when you get a chance. Okay, eagles hunt live prey. And I'm not going to deal with this a whole lot because I did talk about it the last time. But normally they don't eat dead things. They, they eat stuff that's alive. And uh, so we shouldn't waste our time doing anything that doesn't bring life. We need to stay open to the leading of the Holy Spirit. We need to be listening and ready and be sure our mind is filled with life good, godly, and honorable thoughts, not dead, rotten sin, okay? And uh, it's, you know, Philippians 4, 8, finally, brethren, whatever is true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, or commendable, if there's anything of any excellence, anything worthy of praise, think about these type of things. Have you ever done that? I have been in places where I mind would just go to the gutter, and I mean just thinking all the wrong thoughts, not thinking positive, and then I start thinking about that scripture, and so I'd say, okay, let me think about something that's true. And I mean deliberately think about something that's true. And then the same thing with the rest of it, whatever's pure. And you can do that. You may feel kind of funny, but it works or it wouldn't be here, okay? To be like the eagle, <laughs> some of you going to love this one. <laughs> I'm going to duck. Get off Facebook and turn off the news. I don't mean ever, ever see it, but start to be selective about what you feed your spirit on. Amen. People are so negative today because I'll get on there sometimes. I hardly ever get on Facebook. I don't even have an account, and I don't want one. I'm sorry. But sometimes I'll click on there, and I just start seeing stuff I don't want to see. Yeah. I read things that are not fit for me to read, and uh, I mean, I just don't like it. So, anyway, we are to feed our minds on live, wholesome, godly food. No, you, uh, Amen. Hold up your Bible. Who's got a Bible? Anybody got one? <laughs> Bye, thank you. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I'm seeing some Bibles now. That's the good godly food, not the leftover junk they serve on the news and social media. 
Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. And we do have to deal with things on the earth. God didn't mean don't do anything, you know. He didn't mean don't go to work. He didn't mean don't don't ever have any kind of relaxation or fun. He just meant keep your keep your mind right. Yeah. Yeah. Eagles fly alone. They're not herd animals following a pack. They don't follow the latest trends blindly. They either fly alone or with one or two of their own kind. The lesson to be learned of this is that we should be closely associated only with those who bring out the best in our lives. Mm-hmm. Have you ever been around somebody and, and uh, I don't say maybe you weren't close friends, but you just kind of liked hanging out with them a little bit. The next thing you know, you're starting to act a little different. Mm-hmm. It, it will rub off on you. and. Uh, be not deceived, bad company ruins good morals. That's, That's right. Corinthians 15.33. First Corinthians 15.33. The eagle doesn't waste time with other kinds of birds, and we should not learn to waste our precious time with people who are negative and argumentative. Look carefully how you walk. That's Ephesians 5.15-16. through 16, Because the days are evil. Use your time wisely. And listen to this. I don't think anybody's going to throw anything at me in here, but somebody online, (laughs) uh, don't be offended. This is God saying this, not me. So many people, especially post-COVID, are saying they don't need to come to church. I'll let that sink in. Mm -hmm. They can just watch YouTube and get better sermons online. I agree they're far better preachers or teachers than me, but if your only criteria is to attend church to get something out of it, then going it alone as a Christian might work for you. So when we come in, we need to be getting something out of the Word, okay? Not not trying to get something from somebody or, you know, okay? If your desire is to serve God, win souls and grow spiritually. Birds of a feather flock together. Yes. Church is God's idea. And he says, not mine. It helps us grow and to develop in the people he wants us to be. So you've got some gifts in you. That if you're being who God called you to be, and you don't have to put on a show, you just be who God called you to be. And you'll... You'll influence somebody else in the things of God. You'll 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 be pointing them to God, even though you might not be saying anything. Just be who you are in God, and they'll see Jesus in you. Okay. Eagles nest on high, and I know we went over this, but this is a little bit more in depth. And I gave you this scripture earlier, Psalms 39, 27 through 28. I thought I had it up there. Okay. All right, let me call that one out again because this is good. I said it wrong. Job 39, 27 through 28. Is it at your command, talking about God, that the eagle mounts up and makes his nest on high? On the rock he dwells and makes his home, on the rocky crag and stronghold. So we already decided that that was to keep them more safe from predators. Eagles do not bother rest nesting on the ground. They choose the heights to nest and bear their young away from any potential predators. Eagles live and raise their young in lofty places because it's cleaner, it's safer, it's far above the mess and dirtiness of the world below. So if we set our height, our sights on things above, it helps us stay cleaner in our spirit. Okay? Amen. We want our kids and grandkids to grow up in a wholesome environment. And God wants us for that. We're his kids. He wants that for us. A mother air, uh, eagle, I can't even talk now, hallelujah. <laughs> Help my tongue, Lord. <laughs> a mother eagle is fiercely protective of her young, but God is that way of you. And Psalms 57, 1, be merciful to me, O God. 
For in my soul takes ref in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge till the storms of detru- destruction pass by. When the winds and rain come against the eaglets, the mother covers her young with her wings, protecting them and keeping them warm and safe. Psalms 91 and 4. We all know the Psalms 91. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you'll find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. And I'll skip a little bit because I'm running out of time. Whoever you are, come and snuggle under his wings of protection today. So if you're watching on Facebook and you've been uh, tormented because stuff is just not going well or you've been sick in your body or somebody in your family's having a hard time or, or you're having financial problems, get close to God Amen. and he'll, he will help you. Yes. If you call out to him, uh, there's one psalm and it says, I called unto the Lord in my distress, and he answered me and rescued me. He is for me. Who, who can I be afraid of? What, how can I be afraid of what mere man can do to me? The Lord is on my side. He will help me. Eagles harness the winds and storms. Now, I know we touched this last time, but I love this. And this is from a different perspective, this pastor here. Isaiah 40, 31, I've already spoken that about those who wait on the Lord. Watch an eagle and you notice they rarely flap their wings. They just spread them and they soar through the sky, even in a gale gale wind, you know what I'm talking about. The eagle seems to barely move its wings, unlike most other birds who flap. By doing this, the eagle conserves a lot of energy as it rises into the heavens. Now this reminds me of how Pastor tells us to rest in the Lord and focus on Him, and because when we try to do things in and of ourselves, we wear ourselves out, and we do not get anywhere anyway. And so the eagle has enough sense to conserve his energy, but still get whatever he needs done done. He does not fear the adverse winds. And I know I say this a lot. Jesus told us, He said, In this life you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer, because I have overcome them. And so, when something comes against us, that's why the scripture says count it all joy. Because if we will, and that's not always easy to do, and I surely haven't always done that. But if we'll count it all joy, it helps us get to a bit a higher level. Okay? Now I'm going to tell you something. You know, most of you know, about two years ago I was bit by a copperhead snake. And... I can honestly say I, I didn't like it. <laughs> wasn't fun, but I can honestly say when it happened and I saw what happened and I knew what it was and I knew that it was venomous, I refused to get in fear. I mean, that's one time I can say the Lord, I'm sure he was pleased with me in that because I just, I meant I was not going to get afraid. I, I mean, what good would it do? I had to trust the Lord and I did. And he took care of me. I never even had to get the uh, anti-venom. Thank you, Chrissy. (laughs) But my legs stayed swelled up for a long time. And you know, I think God just wanted to show me that he could heal me without the anti-venom. Because each vial of anti-venom was, it's either five or six thousand dollars. So I was thankful I didn't get that. (laughs) But I was thankful God raised me back up. So it was really... Not a hard process once I trusted the Lord. So that should tell you something. He welcomes the adverse winds because he can harness them and use them in a force that would try to destroy him or overpower him. He can use it. So when Satan comes against us with something, we count it all joy and use it, turn it around against him, show him that we are trusting God, that we can get through this thing. And when we do, then God is going to step in and move the situation in favor of us. Amen? Amen. Uh, I'm trying to say what time it is. I've got to hurry up. Okay, I'm going to just throw a few things in there. In the spirit, we can harness the power and surge ahead. I think that's... When attacked by smaller birds like... Oh, you'll love this. Ha <laughs> ha, I forgot it. Eagles overcome attacks and adversity. When attacked 
and bothered or annoyed by smaller birds like crows who swoop and peck, and they do come after them, okay? And they peck us too, don't they? The mighty eagle responds in a unique way. He doesn't fight back. We're not supposed to. It does not change its course or react. All he does is simply rise higher and higher. Amen. At some point, the smaller, annoying birds cannot stand the higher altitudes and the lack of oxygen, and they fall away. So I'm going to end with that tonight. Let's rise up and soar like the eagle does and overcome some of these things. I hope you got something out of it. Word for you, best ever, best ever, and we like this. We like, I like having these scriptures up here. That's good. That's good. Oh my goodness! It just we're gonna soar like eagles, aren't we? Yes, yes. It's so awesome, and I love that. I love that the eagle goes higher, and so the prey that's trying to get on it or trying to kill it, they lose their oxygen. Isn't that cool? I mean, your enemies just fall off in the presence of God. They just can't can't get to you. All right, well, we thank you so much for joining us tonight. We trust that you heard the word and that it has been a blessing to you. And again, hit the share button so that your friends and neighbors can also hear the good word tonight. Let's finish out in prayer. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you love us so much. We thank you, Father God, that you do. You give us examples in your word, like, like that of the, of the eagle, Father God. It doesn't eat dead food. It eats live things, and we should eat from your word, Father God. We should eat the live things. You said to speak life over our life. And so, Father God, how awesome is that? And how awesome is it to know that as the eagle soars, through the storm, Father God, that if there's a predator or something trying to get it, he just goes higher. And how we can go higher in you, Father God. And the more we stay in your presence, the more we stay shielded. And we just thank you for that, Father God. We thank you for the healing that's taking place right now, Father God, over this body. We give you all the praise and the glory, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen.